this is Sally and welcome to Reclaiming Pride, LGBT plus survivors of narcissistic abuse. Before we start, there is a trigger warning. The episodes of this podcast may at times refer to domestic violence, emotional, financial and sexual abuse. To begin, I'd like us to start with a one word feelings check. That's what is one word for how you are feeling right now in this moment. Not how is someone else in your company feeling, not how you might think you're making other people feel, but how are you feeling right now in one word? This week, we're going to be looking at the narcissist and their flying monkeys. So let's as always start by defining our key terms. Flying monkeys is a term often used in the context of psychology and discussions about manipulative and toxic behavior. It's a term that's commonly associated with narcissistic personality traits and behaviors. And here's what we mean. Flying monkeys is a term, as you've probably already connected, that's borrowed from the movie The Wizard of Oz, where the Wicked Witch of the West sends out her flying monkeys to do her bidding. In this context of dealing with narcissists, flying monkeys refer to the individuals who are manipulated or recruited by the narcissist to assist in their manipulative schemes. These individuals often act as enablers, spreading the narcissist's narrative, defending their behavior, and sometimes even participating in the abuse. I remember that my ex, it could be her ex, who was practically always involved in our relationship for its 13 year duration, apart from the short period at the beginning when my ex was actually giving her the silent treatment, her ex would act as her flying monkey and yet be really nice and sweet to my face and it took me a while to cotton onto this. I also remember that when my ex would have friends, which was actually quite rare, they would also act as her flying monkeys. Now this would work out for her until they actually met me and realized that the way she was describing me and the person that they were then meeting were two completely different individuals. Now, you probably know that this happens with narcissists because they don't understand other people and lack empathy almost totally. They lack the ability to read the room and understand who people actually are. You'll know this if you've ever had anyone described to you by the narcissist and you had not met the person being described to you and then you meet them. You would swear that they were a completely different person than the one that the narcissist described to you. Narcissists use this tactic when describing you to other people and therefore they may even make you sound like the abusive one in the relationship and therefore the flying monkeys will then swoop in to defend their narcissistic friend, family member or ex. So that defines what the flying monkeys are in this context. Now how are they employed by the narcissist? Let's see if any of the following sound familiar tactics that you withstood from the narcissist and their flying monkeys. First, there's validation and support. So narcissists may surround themselves with people who validate their behavior and provide unquestioning support. Flying monkeys reinforce the narcissist's sense of entitlement and superiority. Next, there's triangulation. Narcissists might use their flying monkeys to create triangulation. This is where they involve a third party to control or manipulate you. This can lead to confusion and further isolation for you. Next, there's character assassination. If you've ever experienced this, you'll know that the flying monkeys might be used to spread rumors, gossip, or negative information about you, further tarnishing your reputation. Then there's the classic smear campaign. This will be an organized, intentional form of character assassination to discredit somebody, often used by people with NPD to punish, justify their abuse, or make themselves seem superior. Then there's a, a word that we've mentioned in earlier episodes, and that is hoovering. So after the discard phase of the abuse cycle, where the narcissist devalues and discards you, they might use flying monkeys to try and reel you back in by delivering messages of remorse or forced promises of change. Finally, there's intimidation and control. The flying monkeys can be used to intimidate you into compliance or silence. This could involve threats, emotional manipulation, or even harassment. So these are just some of the ways that flying monkeys are employed by narcissists and the ways in which it can directly affect you and those you care about who are in contact with the narcissist. 
In order to recruit their flying monkeys, the narcissist will use a tactic called DARVO, D-A-R-V-O. This is an acronym and it stands for Deny, Attack, Reverse, Victim and Offender. Okay, so they are denying their own accountability in anything. They are attacking you and they are reversing the victim and turning them into an offender. So that's DARVO. In their conversation with their flying monkey or monkeys, the narcissist will make it seem as if you are actually the abusive party in the relationship and they will be very convincing. So if the person who is the flying monkey actually does not have ill intent, what will happen is they will start to believe their friend, the narcissist, and then help them in either launching an attack on you or defending the narcissist's behavior unknowingly. Believe it or not, there are actually different types of flying monkeys, just as there are different types of narcissists. There is the benevolent flying monkey and the malevolent flying monkey. Both of them are enablers, but in very different ways. Basically, the bottom line is one of them realizes they're doing it and the other one does not. So first, we've got the benevolent kind. So a benevolent flying monkey is someone who is sociotropic in nature. That makes them an easy target for manipulators. So sociotropic people suffer from the so-called disease to please, which means that they tend to put the needs of others ahead of theirs constantly. Some sociotropic traits are overvaluation of closeness and social acceptance in order to boost their low self-esteem, while autonomous individuals base their self-esteem on achievement, independence, and control. For example, a sociotropic person may overeat to match the eating habits of the person they are having dinner with in order that that person doesn't feel uncomfortable. They will literally make themselves feel ill in order to make the other person feel comfortable. So it's often these types of people who unwittingly aid and abet a narcissistic person's campaign of emotional abuse because predatory manipulators are quick to sniff out a sociotropic person's powerful longing for this external validation. Given their low self-esteem and lack of boundaries, sociotropic people are perfect targets for narcissists. They could become their partners in an intimate relationship or the narcissist will become friends with them and then the sociotropic people are likely to become then the flying monkeys, the benevolent kind. Benevolent flying monkeys are not consciously trying to cause harm. They're likely to have been subjected actually to similar tactics that the narcissist would have used on the person that they are with, for example, love bombing and gaslighting. These people are usually acting in good faith based on the narcissist's persuasive defamation of the person they are targeting for the abuse, which is you. Then we have the dark side of the flying monkey spectrum, the malevolent flying monkey. So a malevolent flying monkey is a disdainful person by nature. They are not nice people. They knowingly participate in narcissistic abuse because inflicting harm on others gives them a sense of power and superiority. Malevolent flying monkeys tend to identify with highly narcissistic people and NPD folks because they are equally narcissistic in their own right. They usually share the same attitudes and beliefs and feel a sense of belonging in the narcissistic person's group. Because a malevolent flying monkey has no moral compass, it doesn't matter who is right or wrong. In fact, they are usually fully aware that an injustice is taking place. However, these types relish an opportunity to deny dignity and justice to someone who they feel is not like them. Kind of like the mean people who support a gang leader and do their bidding and beat up others and intimidate others and yet would never have the leadership qualities to stand in front of a whole group of people. They are pathetic, but also very dangerous. Like their namesakes, the flying monkeys from The Wizard of Oz, no matter what type they are, they will accept the narcissist's alternate reality and assist their cruelty and smear campaigns. Whether they realize it or not, they're actually participating fully in abuse by proxy. Sometimes these enabler flying monkeys will cross the line and stand with the narcissist in order that they are not actually targeted themselves. Have you ever met someone like that? It is also possible that flying monkeys, particularly the malevolent kind, can easily be folks who have NPD themselves. Whether this is true or not, they do become involved with the narcissist drama, chaos, and assist in harming the selected victims. If you are on the receiving end of any of this, 
it's bad enough to be on the receiving end of the narcissist, let alone their host of flying monkeys. This experience can be absolutely devastating, particularly if this particular flying monkey had been someone you had actually been friends with, either as a couple or as an individual before. The truth is, no matter what, you are really the only one who can ever see the narcissist's true colors. No matter what horrors they put you through, they will always seem to have a fan club, whether it's big or small, of flying monkeys cheering them on. The narcissist will in turn use their flying monkeys for attention, narcissistic supply when you are not available, and any other resources that they can drain from them. You might notice that while the narcissist can't seem to form deep friendships or relationships with anyone, they seem to have a handful of hangers-on, these so-called friends who they've had for an extremely long time. This is not unusual. What you'll normally notice is that they hardly ever see these friends or their long-distance friends. They're able to maintain these sorts of relationships because they were never wholly deep. They were always slightly superficial. If these friends truly knew who the narcissist was, they would probably completely disconnect from them. You might also find that either overtly or covertly, the narcissist actually compares you to their flying monkeys. These can be ex-lovers, friends, or even family members. While in the devaluation stage of the abuse cycle, the narcissist will use these comparisons to make you feel jealous, inferior, and erode your self-esteem, and in turn make you feel worthless. The narc will also surround themselves with exes, potential replacements for you, and really anybody will, that will supply them with narcissistic supply and attention. It's also really crazy making that this person can also include in their cadre of flying monkeys someone that they formally denounced to you. This can make you feel even worse, as when they compare you to these people, you feel like, well, I know what you think about them. Wow, goodness knows what you must think about me. This can be extremely confusing and destabilizing. It can make you think that this person is in high demand the whole time, and yet the only person who's really around is you, taking their abuse, sometimes 24 seven. Who have been some of the flying monkeys that you have had to contend with in the orbit of the narcissists that you are or were dealing with? I remember dealing with the flying monkeys of exes, both of whom had malevolent tendencies. I also remember dealing with flying monkeys in my ex's family. The irony was they were actually all well aware of the fact that there was something very, very wrong with her. Many of them even told me so. I was once told over the phone by one of her family members that they were glad I was there, quote unquote, taking it so that they wouldn't have to. That's nice, isn't it? The key thing to remember here is that all flying monkeys are either sociotropic people who can be either benevolent or malevolent. They may even have narcissistic personality disorder themselves for which there is no cure. In other words, you were never the problem here. So I know that that was a lot of information and it may even have kicked up some things for you. So in order to take a moment to digest, let's take a quick break. And after that, we'll be back with the journal prompt for this week. I'll see you in a moment. Welcome back. And this week's journal prompt on the narcissist flying monkeys focuses on your personal growth. And here it is. Reflect on how exploring the concept of flying monkeys and narcissistic behavior has impacted your perspective. What insights have you gained from this knowledge? How might this understanding influence your interactions and relationships moving forward? As always, when you've completed your journal entry, I would encourage you to read it out loud. This is a really great way of validation. I'd also encourage you, if you want to, to share it with somebody who you trust and who knows you very well, who may have even known you while you were with the narcissist. Please note, this podcast is not intended to replace professional therapy or counselling. It serves as a supplementary resource for support and encouragement. Listeners, you are encouraged to seek professional help if needed. I did, and it still works for me every day. Stay tuned, and I look forward to healing with you again 
next time. Bye-bye.